Okay, congratulations, you are starting level two um, with the 2F notes, which is all about modeling fraction division. So we're gonna be drawing models to represent some fraction division in this part. So this video is a bit lengthy, but it is very important. It goes over each example that you would need to know. And I'm gonna be very deliberate in how you're going to do this. Make sure your packet's out, you have a pencil ready, and you follow right along with this. Now you can still fast forward if you think you've got um, the problems and you're on the right track. But I encourage you to please take your time through this video because it is very important to make sure you understand exactly how we want you to model fraction division. There's a couple ways to do it, but I'm trying to give you as much of a foolproof way to do it as possible. And the thing I've noticed over the years is a lot of times kiddos really don't like to um, model fraction division, but it is so helpful for us in understanding how our division algorithm, those fancy steps we follow to solve a problem, how that works, which you will find out later in the next section after this. So this really helps build your foundation with fraction division and why the algorithm works. So I'm going to make you a little hungry in this one because we've got some food to talk about because that's the best way to model fraction division. So the first type of fraction division we're going to start with is modeling how to divide a whole number by a fraction. And so my family loves to cook s'mores. We love roasting marshmallows, making s'mores. And so that's what this first um, example is all going to be about, is us making s'mores and how much chocolate to use on each one. So for this first example, this one is not in your notes, so you can just kind of follow along real quick. I'll try and go through this one a little bit quicker for you, but I want to make sure you understand the, the premise of how to do this. So with dividing a whole by a fraction, that's already kind of tipping you off when we're in that title, that the whole number is going to come first, and then you're dividing it by a fraction. So it kind of gives us a hint as what our dividend and divisor might be. So we got the problem they have, so my family has four chocolate bars. Each s'more needs one third of a bar. Um, how many s'mores can they make? So the first question always in a division problem like this is what is being divided? So what is our dividend? So if I'm looking at that, I'm dividing up the four chocolate bars. Those are the things that I'm breaking up in order to make my s'mores. So those are our four chocolate bars as our dividend. That's what's being divided. So when you are drawing a model to represent fraction division, you always draw the dividend first. That's why it's so important to figure out, well, what are you dividing? And that's what you have to represent first. So in order to represent these four chocolate parts, bars, I'm simply going to draw four boxes. That's it. That's to get started with our model. I draw four boxes that represents my four chocolate bars. So that's to get us started. Then I need to know how is it being divided. So what's my divisor? So I'm dividing using my divisor, which is one third because I'm using one third to make a s'more. So one third is my um, divisor. So that's how I'm going to be dividing these four boxes. So if I scroll down here, I did that for you. So if you look at each one of my chocolate bars, so I got my, if you look at the big boxes, I got one, two, three, four chocolate bars, and I broke them up into thirds because we were talking about one third being used for the chocolate bar. So I broke it up into one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So each bar is broken up into thirds. And I actually went ahead and counted them up because since we're only using one third for each s'more, I'm just going to count each piece as one s'more because I'm only using a third of the chocolate bar on the s'more. So I've got one s'more, two s'mores, three s'mores, and then I'm just going to keep going. And I end up with 12 s'mores. Kind of makes sense, right? I started with four chocolate bars. I broke that each one into three pieces. So essentially I am taking my four chocolate bars times three, even though the pieces got smaller, it's kind of like I times them by three, which is really the same as dividing by one third. So if I was going to write a number sentence for this problem, I would say that this was four, so the four chocolate bars, divided by one-third used on each bar. And then that ends up equaling 12 chocolate, or uh, s'mores, 12 s'mores. Okay, that would be my answer, it would be 12 s'mores for this kind of problem. 
So let's try one together. Very similar problem, but I don't know about you, but I like a little more chocolate on my s'more than that. Now, I probably would use the whole bar, but let's use this example to help. So we got each s'more needs two-thirds of a bar. They have four chocolate bars, again. How many s'mores can they make? So again, doing this first problem with us. Now, I know you don't have these questions on there, but this is what you should be asking in your head when you do these problems on your own. So the first thing is, what is being divided? What is your dividend? So when you're thinking about that, I sure hope you're thinking, well, the dividend's the same as last time, four chocolate bars. So that is our dividend, four chocolate bars. So because that's our dividend, we have to draw that first. So that's how we're gonna start our model, is using the dividend. So you need to draw four boxes. Go ahead and do that. If you need to pause the video, feel free. You can just do four rectangles, just like how I have it, doesn't matter. Just fill up that space. But that's what you're starting with, is your four boxes to represent your four chocolate bars. That's your dividend. So now we need to figure out how is it being divided. So what's your divisor? So how are we dividing up these chocolate bars? We're dividing it by two-thirds of a bar that we're using on each s'more. So if you look, now I know I have it down here. You can just draw it on your same four boxes. You do not need to draw this the four boxes again. Just take your four boxes and in each one you're going to break it up into thirds because we're talking about thirds pieces again right here. That's where I'm getting that from. The thirds pieces. So go ahead, take a moment to do that. Break up each box into thirds so you're breaking up your chocolate bars. But this time, when we go to count it up, I'm not going to just count each individual thirds piece because I'm not just using one third on my chocolate bar. I'm using two thirds this time. I'm going to be a little chocolatier this time with my s'mores. So instead of counting them up, I'm actually going to group them into two thirds. So I'll kind of box this so it stands out. So because it says two thirds for each, I'm going to circle them in groups of two thirds. So I've got one group of two thirds here, so that would be one s'more. And if I look, this third is exactly the same as this third. It's just on a different chocolate bar, but it doesn't matter once I break the pieces up. So I'm gonna group those together. So there's another s'more. So go ahead and do this with me if you haven't started already. Here's two more thirds. So I'm gonna circle them to make another s'more. Here's another group of two thirds, another group of two thirds, and the last group of two thirds. So if I count up my groups now, since I used more chocolate, I'm not gonna be able to make 12 s'mores again, but that's okay, because they're gonna be chocolatier this time. But instead, I'm gonna count up my groups of two thirds. So I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six s'mores that I can make. So my answer would be six s'mores for this one. Okay, because I counted up how many, groups of two-thirds I could make from my four candy bars. I know my handwriting is only so-so on here, but it works. Six s'mores, that's what you could make. Kind of makes sense because we're using double the amount of chocolate, so we ended up with half as many s'mores, but they're way more chocolatey this time than last. So if I was going to write a number sentence, I would write four as my dividend. Four comes first, divided by two-thirds, because I used two-thirds on each can or, uh, s'more. So my answer ended up being six s'mores, because that's how many times two-thirds fit into four. So that was a, a whole number divided by a fraction. That was how you could model a whole number divided by a fraction. And again, you're always finding that dividend first, drawing that first, then looking at your divisor, breaking it up. You're either going to count up all the pieces if you're just talking about one-third or one-fourth or whatever you're talking about. But if it's two-thirds, or let's say I was saying three-fourths, I need to group them into however many of those pieces I'm talking about and then count up those groups. So those are two different ways to think about it. You can look at both, back at both examples if need be. So now we got dividing a fraction by a whole number. So we're doing the flip-flop of what we just did. So Mrs. Heward in this uh, problem brought one-fourth of a cake to be shared equally by three students for winning a game in math class the day before. Mmm, tasty. How much of the cake will each student get? So as always, division problem, we have to ask what is being divided. So now think, last time we had the whole number that was being divided, but think, if we do that this time, three students would be what our dividend is. I don't want to divide up students. I would much rather be dividing up that cake. So one-fourth of a cake is what we're going to be dividing. That's our dividend. Okay, and this one is in your notes, so you can kind of be following along with the problem, kind of seeing where we're going with it. You don't need to write anything just yet. 
So again, we always start by drawing our, our dividend first. Well, since I'm only talking about one fourth, I don't even have one whole cake yet, but I do need to at least show that whole and then we'll only use part of it. So here's what I want you to do is you need to just draw one big box. And I ask you to draw boxes instead of circles, even though I know I've got a circle cake here, because it's a little bit easier to divide up when we get to the divisor part. So I really encourage you to use the boxes instead of the circles. Okay, it's just a helpful trick. Okay, so now when I look at this, to me this looks like I have one, two, three, four fourths. Well, I don't. I only have one fourth of the cake. So I need to only shade in one fourth. Now it doesn't matter which fourth I picked, I just picked the first one because it seemed easiest to me. But go ahead and shade in one of those fourths. You don't have to do it fancy, like, you know, just scribble it in like I did. So that so far is representing one fourth. Now I know it might seem like we're kind of done, because we've already broken up our box, but we're not quite done because this only represents our dividend first. So now we need to figure out uh, how is this one-fourth of a cake being divided. If you look back at the question up here, it was divided by three students. Three students are sharing this cake. So we need to show this being divided by three students. Well, if I try and kind of squeeze it in here, it's not really going to look like like I'm dividing the whole thing by three. It's very confusing. So we're going to go the different direction. So right now my lines are going up and down to represent the fourth. Well, I'm going to go the other direction and draw some horizontal lines to represent three students. So watch what I do and then you can do it on yours. So I know my lines aren't perfect. I got a little bit squiggly there, but you get the point. So this right now means that I broke it up into one and two sections. They're not even yet because they're i got to break it up more because this would only be two students. So I need to do it again. Let's see if I can do it straighter that time. Only kind of. Okay. I know it's not perfect. You can draw your lines probably better than I can. I'm using my mouse, so it's not perfect, but that's okay. So now I've got, if you look this way, right, this is kind of, this row is representing one student. This second row represents the second student. And this third row represents the third student. So now I'm representing one, two, three three students and now I only want to look at what one student is going to get. I want to know how much each student is going to get. Well, they're not going to get this whole row because this part of the cake doesn't exist. Only the shaded in part does. That's why I had to represent that one fourth. So one student is only going to get this piece right here. In order to know what that piece represents, I have to look at my entire uh, box so far. So now it's not representing fourths anymore because I split it into three pieces the other direction. Now I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces. So if we had had the whole cake, I would end up with twelve pieces. But we only have a fourth of the cake, but it's still representing out of that twelve that we would have had if we had the whole cake. So it's still twelfths. So one student is going to get one twelfth of the original whole cake. So even though we're only starting with that fourth, when we're breaking it up, it still ends up with 12 pieces, and the one student gets one of those 12. As well as this student would get one twelfth, and then this student would get one twelfth. So this one piece represents that. So you need to do what I did, see how mine looks, and you split it into thirds this way, and then you shade it in um, those pieces, and then you only circle one section. I don't care if you circle the top one or the bottom one, as long as you're only circling one, because that represents the one twelfth they're going to get. And if you look, we write a number sentence. We had one fourth of the, that was the cake divided by the three students, and we ended up with one twelfth. It ends up equaling one twelfth of the cake that the kiddos get, that each one gets.